We've already identified the number one trend in Major League Baseball this season, and it's not the splitter. It's the death of the fastball. Now, I know we're just over a week into the season, but I think there's some signal in the data we already have. Year over year, the league is moving away from fastballs on the whole, which we'll get to. But let's start with four-seam fastballs specifically. We're down just under five percentage points from 2021 and down over a full percentage point compared to last year, barely lingering above 30% four-seam fastball usage on the league level. This data looks very similar, even if you look at just the first six or seven days of each of the past opening seasons as well. We're the lowest we've been over the last few years and probably the lowest in the history of baseball in terms of fastball usage. This forcing decline is seen heavily when hitters are ahead in the count. For example, a pitcher is in a spot where he needs to throw a strike or he puts himself in danger of walking a hitter. League-wide, behind-in-count forcing fastball usage is down three percentage points, three times the decline we saw on the broader non-count specific level. This is something I've hammered in other videos as well. Even good forcing fastballs are terrible when a hitter is ahead in the count. The league slugged 546 on four seamers behind in the count last season. Overall slug on any pitch type last year was just 414. So about 130 points more than the average. And it's that simple as to why I think we're seeing this decline. Fastballs are the worst pitches in terms of batted ball outcomes. It's just taken certain teams in the league time to realize this and probably overcome the more old school thought processes in an organization preventing those teams from fading four seam usage. Pitchers are replacing that behind and count four seam fastball that got crushed last year with two pitches in particular. Sliders, which is really no surprise because the league loves sliders. Behind in the count slider usage is up just under 1% compared to last season. And that's not as much as the pitch that's having what I call a mini revolution, the sinker. Behind in count sinkers have climbed from 18% a few years ago to now just over 20%. Again, I know these are small percentage changes overall, I get it, but that's why I'm trying to show multiple years of information. We're looking at trends here, when they start, how long they go, when they plateau off, etc. Because it tells us what teams are thinking, or perhaps what they were thinking a year or two ago that is now manifesting in actual on-field usage and performance. When plateaus happen, that tells us hitters have probably adjusted and the league is trying to do something else that hasn't necessarily manifested on the field or has manifested with just a few teams. On the sinker particularly, I think that tiny bump in usage is relevant because if we zoom out all the way back to 2012, the league has been moving away from the sinker for a while. The usage of that pitch on a league-wide level hasn't increased by a full percentage point in a long time. And so far this season, we've seen it jump just over a half a percent. It's not a sinker revolution, but I do think it's relevant. There's a graph from the good folks at Driveline Baseball that shows how they grade out sinkers relative to forcing fastballs at different velocity intervals. The x-axis here is velocity and the y-axis is their stuff plus model. And the red and blue lines are sinkers and forcing fastballs respectively. Their model actually likes most sinkers better until you hit 97 miles per hour. Now again, we're talking broad strokes here. You need to consider the shape of any given four seam before just assuming a sinker is a better option. Maybe this graph is perhaps a bit too generalized, but I ran it by some folks, one of which is working at the major league level and got this response. Again, he's cognizant of the nuance around an individual pitcher, but accepting of the idea on the whole. To me, from talking to coaches about this, the sinker is definitely something more guys are pushing on their pitchers if there isn't good velocity or carry traits on their four seam fastball. Now let's talk about the team level usage driving this trend. As you may have seen on Twitter, the poster organization of this anti four seam agenda is the Boston Red Sox, who recently overhauled some of their decision makers, hiring Craig Breslow from the Cubs, Andrew Bailey, a pitching coach from the Giants, and bringing on special advisor Kyle Bodie, who was a co-founder of Driveline Baseball. The Red Sox have thrown just under 13% four seam fastballs this season. 13%. No other team is under 17%, and no other team since 2008 has been 14% or less for a full season. The 2023 Giants, who were just under 15%, were coached by none other than Andrew Bailey. And some of the other teams close to this full season four-seam usage came from a pair of Cardinal teams back in 2009-2010 that were pretty sinker happy. 
It's not just that the Red Sox aren't throwing forcing fastballs, they don't want to throw any fastballs. Which gets back to the main theme of this video, the fastball is dying. And the craziest thing here is that among the teams with the lowest combined fastball usage since 2008, the top three and six of the top eight are all from this season. It's pretty heavily skewed to who we think are some of the sharper organizations in baseball from a pitching development standpoint. I do find it interesting that if you navigate slightly down in this anti-fastball list, inside the 20 lowest teams with fastball usage over the last 16 years, you get two organizations in the AL Central that it seems like are on the up and up. Let's take a look at the Red Sox, Royals, and Tigers fastball usage specifically over the last four seasons. We've seen a downtrend in all of these organizations for a bit, but it's notable to me that this is the season with the steepest fall off in usage for a few of these. The Red Sox fall off is kind of insane. We already went over this, but it's a 17 percentage point drop in fastballs thrown year over year. But the Royals and Tigers are both really backing off fastballs too, and they actually started doing it last year. Both of those organizations cut their fastball usage by five percentage points from 2022 to 2023. And then each continued to reduce a bit more this season. The Royals have kind of cooled off, but the Tigers made another sizable cut. Andrew Bailey, the Red Sox new pitching coach from the Giants, had some pretty good thoughts on this anti-fastball idea as well. This is coming courtesy of Jen McCaffrey of The Athletic. Bailey equated the fastball to a jab in boxing, focusing on the location of those jabs, knowing where and when to use those jabs or your fastball. And that idea of know when to use your fastball, I've heard it a bazillion times. In this context from Bailey, I think it means our guys were using fastballs too much. In the past, this phrasing is often tied to the opposite. I see it almost as an old school phrase that suggests you should use your fastball more. And the boxing analogy brings up a cool idea that I heard from a friend of mine, Merrick Ramilo, who does some awesome work with driveline baseball. He's an extremely sharp guy. The idea is that on the public side of things, we think about combinations of pitches as not having what you'd call multiplicative effects. If you value your fastball as a one and a slider as a two, when you combine those two numbers and sequence them together, you would get a three. But I don't really think that reflects reality of how sequences work. Perhaps, for example, by combining your fastball and your slider based on the characteristics of those pitches, when you combine them together, you actually get, say, a 2.9 or you get a 3.1, right? The combination of those two pitches actually nets something greater or less than the pure individual contribution of those two pitches alone. Just as the combination of two pitches can make the sum of those two pitches greater than the individual parts, it can also make that sum worse, which is probably the case if you were to just repeatedly throw one pitch over and over, like a fastball. If you value that as a one and you throw it 10 times in a row, it might not actually have a total value of 10. It might be more like nine, which is suggesting that the final five fastballs that you threw, for example, in that sequence, have fallen off slightly from that value of one, perhaps because the hitter becomes more comfortable with that offering after five thrown. This is actually an argument for not throwing your best pitch as much as possible because at some point you're overexposing that pitch. The as possible in that sentence is doing a lot of work. This is really what I think Bailey is getting at in that analogy. Perhaps he's thinking that the fall off in fastball effectiveness comes quicker than we think. Maybe it comes on pitch two or three. Like your fastball is worth one and then your second fastball after one fastball is worth 0.5 all of a sudden. Such that the Red Sox prefer to throw another pitch like a sweeper or a cutter to buy back the value of that fastball and push it back up to one. That would suggest that the further away a hitter is from a pitch, the less comfortable he becomes with that pitch. This season is shaping up to be the lowest in terms of fastball usage, probably in the history of the sport. And we don't have data to go back and confirm that, but I'm pretty confident in saying that. Maybe we see some slight regression upward from the numbers we have, but again, we're getting such massive samples of information very quickly here that I do think this stuff stabilizes pretty early, which means that for the rest of this season, I believe these trends will continue and we're not gonna see a massive reversion. If we look back at the end of the season, and see that since the beginning of the pitch tracking era, we have the bottom four teams in terms of fastball usage, which is that chart I showed earlier. That would be pretty insane. And I think this might be the culminating year of the anti-fastball revolution. It's just a matter of when we see a plateauing of this. And at one point, perhaps it swings back and teams start to value really good fastballs super highly again. That remains to be seen. The circle of life, the circle of baseball life, so to speak, right? 
death to the fastball. As always, thanks for watching. I'll be in the comments if you have thoughts on this and anything else.